side, um, I will start the meeting. First of all, a big welcome to everybody who joining the for joining the third webinar of the Research Hawaii Publishing and Research Communications webinar series. Um, my name is Kathy Kwan. I'm the PRC webinar series working group coordinator. I will moderate this webinar with two of my fellow working group members, uh, Carol Halia from IFIS and Jihan, Jihan Al Jiraya from WHO Regional Office for Eastern Mediterranean Region. First of all, I give, I give you a recap of some of the information about the webinar series. Uh, the series is structured along this simple life cycle model to guide the organization of the series and also provide a framework for learning. This picture is from an article from the uh, Journal of Medical Library Association, which is show a linear layout of different research stages. It is also replied, replied that there is a look back from the disseminating stage to the ID development stage. There are six webinar in the series, two already being held in May, which highlight the idea development stage and lay out the research landscape under the uh, open science movement. If you miss them, you can review them in the recording. I'll show you a little bit how to get there. Uh, we'll talk about the funding and proposal stage today in webinar three and focusing on writing grant proposals. Then the end of June, we will have, uh, we'll talk about the publishing ethics in the con conducting stage. Uh, in July, we'll move to the topics on disseminating your research output. The webinar series is a collaboration among multiple research for white partners and leveraging their resources. It is unique in itself for research for life. Although the live webinar attendees is limited to research for life eligible countries, pe uh, people from research for life eligible countries, the recording and material of the, uh, each webinar will be freely available after the webinar has taken place in this site that I listed here. Um, uh, we will we'll try when we will also try to highlight the challenges facing LMIC mem member. So I do a quick one now. This is the site that when you go there, it will you will see this and you click on recording. You can already see their uh, recording for the previous two webinar. If you miss them, do try to come here to take a look. So. Um, today, uh, this is our rundown. Um, today, uh, getting funding for research is crucial to get your research going. So today's presentation, you will get an overview of the processes of writing grant, winning grant proposals. Uh, we'll have 90 minutes today. So uh, we're going into the introduction and of the webinar series and webinar now. And then the presentation will last about 55 minutes. So it's ample time for Dr. Mahasi to uh, give you his take. Um, please uh, keep your question and put your question in the Q&A box. You can do it along the presentation, but the question will be discussed at the end after the presentation. And then at the very end, we'll have a brief web up where Carol will tell you a little bit about the next webinar. So we are very lucky to have Dr. Saihi Manhasi, Man, Man, Mashahi to present to be our presenter today. Dr. Saihi is a training consultant at CABI. He is leading the local and regional online training on responsible conduct of research and scientific publishing and communication. Those are attended by over 20,000 participants in the last two years. Sahi received his Bachelor of Science in Art Culture at Alexandria University in 2004 and his Master of Science in Plant Pathology in a joint program between Alexandria University in Egypt and Agricultural University of Athens in Greece in 2010. Uh, Sahi received his PhD in Plant Pathology in North Carolina State University 
in USA in 2016, and then he pursued two postdoc uh, fellowship in NC State and Virginia Tech University. So he's currently also a full-time assistant professor at the Maha University in Egypt and the principal investigator of a 2 million LE reintegration grant funded by SDRDF. So he has a lot of experience in writing grant, winning grants. So without further ado, the floor is yours, Sahi. Uh, thank you so much, Katie, for the uh, very nice and kind introduction. And uh, uh, it is my pleasure to be with you today. I really would like to thank you, uh, thank Carol, Jihan, and Marsha for your kind assistance. And I would like to welcome all our attendees today. It is my pleasure to uh, join you in discussing this uh, very uh, key and very important topic of uh, writing winning grant uh, proposals, which is very, a very important step in our uh, career, uh, in achieving our career uh, success. Uh, today, we will uh, have an overview of the whole process. We will put some emphasis on some of the uh, steps and uh, uh, the items that you kindly uh, share the interest in uh, in the uh, in your response prior to uh, to the seminar. Uh, uh, looking at your input uh, prior to uh, today's webinar, I see that. Uh, we have, uh, or we had a 50-50 uh, group uh, between those who uh, previously uh, written and submitted proposals and those uh, who didn't, which means this will be a very nice opportunity for exchanging uh, experiences and also, uh, uh, you know, learning from, uh, from one another. Uh, I also see that uh, most of uh, those who responded uh, were uh, acting as a principal investigator or a, a co-principal investigator. Uh, some were researchers, uh, graduate students, technicians, and others. So it looks like we have a very diverse uh, group today, which is a very, very good uh, indication. Uh, I also see that... Uh, a big proportion uh, of those who responded are uh, either currently working on a grant uh, proposal uh, or uh, interested in writing a grant proposal very soon, uh, which means that this topic hopefully will be uh, very, very useful for, uh, for all of us, including, uh, including myself. Um, the, the detailed questions uh, show that we all are interested in the entire process, so each part of, uh, of the process got uh, some highlights from some of the uh, participants. Uh, we will try to walk you through all these uh, steps very, uh, very quickly, very quickly and very briefly, um, and we will try to respond to your questions uh, about each step of those, uh, if you are interested more in one specific step uh, at the end, uh, at the end of the uh, of the seminar. Uh, basically, we divide the process of um, of winning uh, proposals into three main uh, stages. Uh, the first stage is the pre-writing stage, which is uh, the stage at which we select the proposal. We uh, determine which idea, which research topic we would like to uh, write the proposal about and um, how to form our research team. Uh, the next phase, which is the writing phase, yeah, uh, we... Okay, so uh, uh, the, the writing phase is uh, the phase at which we write each part and each component of, uh, of the proposal, and we will go over those one by one, uh, you know, uh, uh, very, very quickly, and I hope, um, uh, I hope you, uh, you, will, uh, you will enjoy it. Um, great. Uh, uh, the last phase is, um, you know, the review and submission and uh, getting through the review process and hopefully learning um, some news with some conditional acceptance and then uh, going working with the, uh, the funding agency to, uh, to review the, the, the proposal and making sure that we fulfill all the requirements and uh, sign the contracts and receiving, uh, receiving the funds. So let's, let's jump uh, straight into it and see uh, what we could uh, discuss together about each one of these, uh, these steps. Uh, first, why, why do we need to apply for grants? Uh, this is a very, very important question. 
uh, and it has some very simple answers <laughs> uh, for it. Uh, uh, you know, um, uh, receiving funds is one of the key qualifications for applying for faculty positions uh, everywhere. Uh, so if you are interested in, in applying for a faculty position, you will uh, find some terms um, uh, indicating that you need to show some evidence of commitment uh, to seeking and obtaining uh, funds for, for your uh, research, uh, research project. And, and you know, uh, pay close attention to, to the word commitment, which means that it, one, one trial is not probably enough. <laughs> so you need to uh, apply uh, at least more than once. Uh, and, and hopefully you will, uh, you will have some, uh, some success uh, in some of those, uh, of those attempts. Uh, the other thing too is uh, even if you are only seeking a, a postdoctoral position, uh, it is one of the expectations from the postdoctoral uh, 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 fellows to, to write uh, grant proposals and to participate uh, in submitting grant proposals on behalf of the research, uh, the research team. Uh, there is also a, a long, long, long list of financial <laughs> reasons uh, because you know receiving uh, um, uh, and winning grants supports a lot of, uh, financially supports a lot of activities uh, in our research uh, cycle, uh, salaries, uh, research expenses, uh, events, uh, organization costs, publication, travel, institution, institutional uh, infrastructure, and uh, we we will not go over those one by one uh, because we will have uh, a different section that will overlap uh, with this uh, later on. So shortly, we all need uh, to, uh, to obtain uh, grants and, and to receive uh, funding for our research, uh, research projects. So how uh, can we uh, identify uh, funding, uh, funding sources? Uh, this is a very important question because, you know, um, uh, the, choosing the, uh, the right research uh, uh, funding source is is let's say more than 70% of your success uh, in uh, winning it. Um, th there are different types of uh, funding sources and uh, regardless where you are uh, globally, there are two, there are three different sources that you, uh, you should look at. Uh, an institu an institutional funds, and these are the funds that are av available uh, to uh, scientists within uh, your institution. Uh, these should be offered by your home institution uh, directly to those who are affiliated uh, to, uh, to the institution. Um, the, uh, the other uh, uh, source is the national funds, which are the funds that are available from uh, your government uh, or uh, national agencies um, tasked with funding uh, and distributing governmental fund, and also you might uh, have some uh, private uh, funding agencies too, uh, offering you uh, some research funds uh, locally, so you don't have to, uh, uh, to work uh, globally to achieve them. Uh, the, the last source is the international fund, which is uh, probably uh, perceived to, more, to be more challenging and more, uh, more difficult. Uh, however, it is it is very rewarding and it helps people establish a lot of their uh, a lot of international collaboration and reach beyond the borders of uh, of their uh, respected uh, respective countries. Um, and and because different disciplines have different funding agencies that are interested in funding them, uh, and also because different uh, countries and different regions uh, around the world have uh, you know their own. Uh, um, uh, specific uh, situations, I would encourage each of you uh, to look at all three components and to try to locate uh, funds uh, um, uh, that are directed toward their, uh, their fields in each one, uh, in each one of those. Uh, if you are not aware of any of those, or uh, if you are not aware of uh, um, any one of those, uh, feel free to ask your colleagues um, uh, in the lab, in the university, uh, uh, feel free also to contact the, uh, uh, the uh, project management unit at your uh, home institution. Uh, they are there to support you. Uh, they know 
uh, of all the grants that has been, um, you know, uh, received in your institution. They know the funding agencies. They know all the projects that have been funded in your department, in your discipline. So they are uh, the uh, the where to go to ask uh, if you uh, if you need any uh, any questions. Uh, and also during the open question uh, and answer, uh, you know, uh, part of the session, we all could exchange ideas and. Uh, we all could exchange, you know, uh, thoughts about how to identify uh, funding sources effectively uh, for each uh, for each one uh, one of us. So um, after identifying the funding source, uh, now it's it's uh, it's time to select which call to apply to uh, that is offered by the funding agency. And, and this is also one of the very key steps in the, uh, in the process because um, there is a lot of factors that need to be taken uh, into account when selecting, uh, when selecting uh, a grant call to apply for. Uh, one of which is the technology readiness level required uh, uh, or assigned for uh, for the call. Uh, there are some uh, calls that are directed more towards the idea development, uh, whether it is basic concept, uh, uh, you know, observation or reporting, uh, or you know, concept formulation uh, or proof of concept uh, experiments. Um, and and those, you know, you cannot apply for those if you have something that is more advanced. Uh, if you have something in the range of idea validation, or maybe uh, developing prototype, uh, or probably uh, production uh, of technology of production of the outcome uh, product. Uh, so, as you see, you know each each stage has its own objective, and when when the when the call is directed towards one or two of these. Uh, it means that the other ones will be excluded, even if, if they are more advanced, uh, because you know uh, if if they were to fund something that is that far uh, in uh, in the technology uh, uh, readiness level, they would have indicated that in their uh, in their code for technology uh, readiness level. So it's it's good to know where exactly uh, uh, the call is focusing. And whether or not your uh, your proposal or your idea is at that uh, at that phase, uh, the other thing too is uh, we need to familiarize ourselves with the uh, announcement uh, 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 deadline announcement and deadline schedule for uh, for the calls. Uh, this is an example from the STDF here in Egypt, and uh, they. Um, they have a clear, a clear, you know, uh, year-round calendar for uh, the specific calls they offer, uh, the announcement dates that they should uh, be opened uh, or announced, and the and the deadlines uh, and uh, and all all the steps. So knowing these, uh, you know, dates in uh, in details uh, ahead of time helps you prepare ahead. Uh, especially because most of these calls, when they are open, they are open for only one month. So you may not be, uh, one month may not be long enough for, for you to uh, do everything from scratch, but it will be more than enough if you have started um, ahead of time and, and you are just preserving that month for finalizing your, uh, your proposal. Uh, the other good idea too, uh, when selecting the call, is to look for the frequent, uh, frequently offered calls, uh, calls that are offered every single year, um, and and they are repeated. So if you don't get um, a good chance in, in in winning it in the first round, maybe you can um, readjust and re uh, and reapply again. Um, or if you, for some reason, missed the deadline, uh, you still can come back and apply the uh, apply the next uh, the next year. Uh, you also would like to uh, consider the uh, the calls with matching objectives, matching and consistent objectives. So if you look at this uh, reintegration uh, call, you know it, not only it is frequent uh, and consistent. But also uh, the objectives are consistent. So uh, even if they like change 
couple of words from one year to another, they are still targeting the same exact group with the same exact uh, with the same exact uh, objective. Um, uh, the, the other useful uh, tip is the um, the eligibility uh, requirements because if if you miss one of these items, you are disqualified. So you have to make sure that you um, that you perfectly match the eligibility criteria. Uh, they are looking for people under 40. You have to be under 40. If not, don't, don't waste your time. Uh, they need people who receive their degree uh, from abroad. If, if you're not, uh, don't waste your time. They need three papers published in you know, a prestigious journal in the field. If you don't have it, don't waste your time. So all these you know, uh, eligibility criteria, it, this is one of the non-negotiable uh, steps. So make sure that you visit and revisit and revisit this before you spend uh, your time working uh, on writing a grant proposal for a call. Make sure that you 100% match uh, the uh, eligibility uh, criteria. Uh, the, the, other, you know, the other key piece of information is the evaluation uh, criteria because this is by far your treasure, treasure trove, because they show you what they are looking for, how they will evaluate your, uh, your proposal, and try to select a call that you have uh, some, um, some uh, advantageous uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, situation in terms of the uh, evaluation criteria. Uh, as you will see, they focus on quality, quality, and impact. Um, and um, these, every single word that are written here is a key word that you definitely, definitely uh, should think about carefully and make sure that you uh, consider and you showcase it in your, uh, in your proposal. Um, um, the, 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 the last piece of uh, information that you need to take into account here is uh, the contract terms. Uh, because sometimes people walk the journey all the way to the end. And when they reach the contract signing phase, they get shocked with some contract terms that they cannot accept and their situation does not allow, uh, does not allow for. And it, it's, it, it's, it's a very sad situation. Uh, if, uh, if you do all the hard work and you win the grant proposal, and then you cannot, you cannot sign, uh, sign the contract. Um, and, and one of the examples uh, was the, uh, the reintegration grant. Uh, uh, this call is granted specifically uh, to the PI. So the PI cannot hand the, the, the grant to the co-PI uh, if they want to travel. Therefore, uh, they have to stay for the entire period of the reintegration uh, uh, grant. Um, so if, if you plan to travel and you are not aware of this term, you know, deal breaking term and and sometimes there are some way around um, of those terms and and sometimes there is not uh, so it's good to know uh, the terms of the the contract and if, if if you don't know it if you don't know someone who received that fund uh, th that grant before it's it's good to contact the, the funding agency to tell them you know what I'm interested in this and I'm interested in uh, uh, looking at the uh, the contract terms uh, to see if uh, if this will work for me and will work for my colleagues and my uh, my research uh, my research team. So watch out <laughs> for for what you don't know um, and for the terms that you are not uh, aware of. Um, uh, you you also will need to um, to select the uh, the call that matches your objectives. Uh, if you want to uh, to get fund to do some capacity building, then well, go for calls that are directly uh, geared towards capacity building. Uh, if you need support for current research, go for the calls that are directly you know uh, aiming at funding uh, 
um, you know, uh, research, research support. Uh, young researchers grants, PhD students, master students, this is uh, your call. Uh, if you need some uh, funding for your travel costs to, uh, to participate in conferences and so on, well, uh, that's what the grants will allow you to ask for, but make sure to include it uh, in, your, uh, in your budget. Uh, you want to organize some events. There are calls for organizing events, local events, international events, uh, uh, you know, uh, faculty members, uh, junior faculty members, uh, and, and uh, graduate students. So every, every activity you would like to do, you will find some funding sources that will uh, that will uh, that will support it. Uh, you want to publish open access, and you will need to pay the publication fee. Yes, grants cover that, but make sure you include it uh, and justify it in your uh, in your budget. Uh, you want to establish some international collaboration, bilateral international collaboration. Uh, there are calls for specific countries. You can uh, shoot for those specifically. Look. Uh, um, look for the country that you would like to uh, to establish some collaboration or to continue uh, a current collaboration with and apply for those uh, for those calls. Uh, you have an idea that um, has a very high risk uh, uh, of uh, of failing. <laughs> uh, technology development, something that that is very risky. Well, yes, you can. You, there are calls directly directed uh, at you to support you in the, in the de technology develop development phase. Um, and, and they are there to support you even as early uh, as, uh, as that. Uh, and also it's, it's, it's a very significant source of salaries, especially in, in uh, developing countries where uh, faculty uh, members' salaries are not as, uh, as they should, uh, as they should be. Uh, in, in in this case, there are salaries that are commensurate with the uh, you know uh, the career stage, uh, which could support you know researchers to uh, to to make to make for uh, their living. Um, this this might not be typical uh, in the Western countries, uh, because you know research is considered as uh, part of of uh, the the position, you know, uh, assignments and requirements. Uh, but in developing countries, this is something that that is very uh, common and very uh, and very typical. So when selecting your call, make sure you select correctly uh, to match your uh, to match your objectives. Well, I selected the call. Uh, let's then select the research topic that uh, um, that will help you win uh, win the grant. Uh, when selecting the research topic, you need to select um, a smart research, a smart research topic. And by smart here, we mean uh, a topic they want to fund, they themselves want to fund, uh, something that is key to the country, something like self-sufficiency of wheat here in Egypt. We are the largest importer of wheat uh, worldwide. That, that means this is uh, an, an you know, uh, a nation's priority, water desalinization, uh, climate resilience, smart agri agriculture, and anything related to your topic that is actually of, uh, at, at the center of the focus of the funding agency. Uh, uh, it's, it's, good, uh, it's good to select one of, those, uh, one of those topics and to make sure that uh, you are not uh, gonna have hard time uh, hard times uh, convincing the funding agency to fund you. In fact, they will like to fund uh, to fund your topic. Um, and and after selecting that very bright and and very hot topic and very useful topic for your country, for your uh, uh, for the funding agency, for your institution, for your people, uh, then make sure you sit, you uh, bring together uh, um, the perfect research team uh, that will uh, help you uh, carry out uh, carry out the, the research. Uh, make sure that you select the research team uh, based on qualifications and and competence, um, especially the relevant publications. So each uh, 
uh, research team members should have publication on this particular topic. So if you want to apply for, for something uh, focusing on ozone and wheat, well, you have to showcase that, you know, the, the research team collectively has enough uh, uh, of experience and, and uh, proven experience uh, by, you know, uh, publication uh, under, uh, under, uh, under their belt. So and and avoid the honorary uh, uh, research team membership. Uh, make sure that uh, you include uh, the appropriate disciplines needed to carry out the research. Um, so if 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 you want to do something that needs uh, someone uh, specialized in environmental stress, then that that should be there. Plant pathology, uh, fungal fungal plant diseases, uh, plant physiology. Uh, uh, Make sure that you have the right recipe in, in terms of uh, disciplines needed to carry out uh, the research, uh, the research uh, project. Uh, make sure also you include all generations because this is, um, this is one of the indications of uh, how will the team work. Uh, you need someone who is, uh, you know, uh, who has a lot of experience to, uh, to help and, and, and guide the team. Uh, you need some mid-career, you know, scientists to, to have the energy and, and the power to, uh, to work uh, as needed. Uh, you also uh, need to include uh, uh, early career uh, and, and, and junior uh, researchers and scientists, graduate students, and even uh, undergraduate students. And, and when you have this, uh, it shows that this is actually a team. Uh, this is actually uh, a, a, a knowledge uh, gener knowledge exchange environment. Uh, this is a team building process where you know junior scientists can support young scientists and so on, all the way to the undergraduate students who probably might run their graduation projects as part of your uh, of your grant uh, proposal uh, this is what we call career development potential so when you put this this uh, you know multi generational uh, team structure you showcase that there is a lot of career uh, development potential for uh, for young scientists uh, uh, researchers and uh, and students so with this, you know, you are ready uh, with your team, definitely, to start writing your, uh, your grant uh, proposal. Um, and uh, although we will start talking about how to write the title, and then the abstract, it is very, very um, uh, recommended that you leave these two pieces to the last because they need to be crafted. They need to, they need to be crafted. And when you finish writing the, the, uh, the whole proposal, you are more suited to write those um, uh, perfectly. And so, yes, we'll discuss them now first uh, in the order in, uh, at which they show up uh, in the proposal. But my advice is leave these two uh, to, uh, to the end uh, when you actually write your uh, proposal. Let's take a look at the, uh, the title and how, uh, how we need to write some uh, attractive and informative uh, title, uh, which is, uh, forgive me. Uh, so um, your title is the hook, uh, is the hook that will um, let you catch people's attention and will convince the funding agency uh, or will play a, a big role in convincing the funding agency to fund your uh, your grant. And um, I, I, I don't want you to, to, select, um, to select a good title. I, I want you to craft an innovative title that is hard to be rejected. This is your key to success. Make sure that your title on its own uh, will give the reviewers hard times to reject it. They will think twice, three times before, before they reject it. You, will, you need 
to use a title that when they look at it, they say, yes, that's exactly what we are looking for. This is the kind of topics that we, uh, we need to, uh, to support. This is the kind of ideas that we need, uh, that we need to support and that we need to fund. Uh, make sure that you show the novelty in the title. Uh, something that like introduction of, that means something new that has not been here before. Uh, make sure that you put um, some key words that are hard to be, uh, to be rejected. Uh, to increase the Egyptian wheat production. Well, Egypt is the largest wheat uh, importer. Well, this is a proposal aiming at, you know, increasing wheat production in Egypt. So make sure that, that you appeal you appeal to the funding agency. You appeal to your uh, to your country, to your uh, you know uh, to your environment with uh, with your uh, with your title. Um, your next uh, your next tool is your abstract, and I cannot emphasize how important the abstract is because um, many 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 of those who will handle your proposal will only read the abstract will only need will only read the abstract that means your abstract might be your only chance to to get their attention and to uh, to get their to get their support and to convince them uh, to uh, vote for your for your proposal if there are uh, if they are uh, asked to vote. So let's take a look at the abstracts and see what we need to do when we write the, uh, the abstract. Uh, basically, we need to answer all, uh, all the key questions uh, that, um, that, that, that the funding agency has, uh, the reviewers have, and, and anyone who would deal with your uh, proposal uh, might, uh, might have. Uh, make sure you use all the magic words that you can use from your treasure trove. Remember your treasure trove, which is the evaluation criteria. Emphasize the innovation, the technology, um, the quality. Uh, make sure you, you, you emphasize the applicability. Uh, make sure you emphasize the impact, uh, the socioeconomic indicators. Make sure you, you include as many as you can uh, of these terms in your uh, in your uh, in your abstract. Uh, the other thing too is you need um, clearly to describe the research problem simply and effectively. Uh, you also need to show how important it is. What would be the return on investment uh, when uh, you complete your your product? And if you don't have a figure, if you're not going to develop a product that will be sold, then at least um, uh, calculate how much does it cost us now um, uh, that we don't have a solution for this uh, for this problem. So here we don't we don't know how much you know ozone tolerant varieties will yield, but we know that ozone is costing Egypt, you know, three point seven to four point to five point four billion uh, Egyptian pounds every year. So if you don't have a positive figure, at least look at for the cost of the missed opportunity for not uh, solving uh, uh, the, uh, the problem. Uh, your next step is to um, provide some state of the art, uh, you know, review of, uh, of, uh, uh, of the topic. What do we know about it? What do we need to know about it? And throughout this uh, state of the art review, you need to identify the knowledge gap or the un, uh, uh, unanswered uh, research, uh, research questions. Uh, how could we address the knowledge gaps? Uh, what are the, the potential options specifically, name them specifically? Uh, which one do we propose to use to address the knowledge gaps uh, out of these options and, and why? And why, um, why specifically our uh, our approach is 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 more suitable to uh, to address uh, to address those, and how uh, the the uh, how our proposal uh, is actually related to 
uh, and, and directly uh, connected to the objectives of the call. Uh, the reintegration funds is uh, aiming at reintegrating PhD students returning from abroad with PhD degrees. Well, the PI is returning uh, from a PhD abroad and is willing to serve his country and is trying to transfer uh, technology and, 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 uh, and knowledge and make sure you connect these dots. Here is what you guys want to do and here is what we are proposing to do and they are exactly the same. Then fund us, please. That's, that's what you want uh, that's what you want to convey uh, in this, uh, in this, uh, in this part. And uh, make sure you conclude uh, your abstract uh, with a very clear paragraph that brings it home, that hits, um, hits all the nails together on the head and uh, you know, uh, uh, presses all the buttons and, and brings all the bright selling points together in one single paragraph. Um, that's, that's your abstract. And definitely write the abstract appropriately and, and effectively, it would be best if you write it last, right before you write your title. Uh, and um, at least this is, this is what we might advise you, uh, advise you with. Well, uh, let's take a look at how to write a compelling research background, which is uh, our, next, uh, our next step. Um, now, the, the, the introduction, the research background, the research statement, whatever you call it, uh, this is where you will define the problem. And when defining the problem, uh, you need to tell a very diverse panel, uh, what is the research problem, simply and effectively. Um, the next thing is why should we study this, this problem? Uh, why it is important? Uh, we need to use some very basic language, some very simple language. We need to avoid some sophist the sophisticated terminology because the panels are diverse and you need to win all of them. Uh, right for a broad and diverse uh, group of members of panels and uh, handlers who, ha who will handle your, uh, your proposal. Uh, why should we invest in studying this, uh, in studying your uh, this topic, avoid exaggerations, use numbers, um, focus on every different type of impacts, economic impacts, uh, uh, social impacts, scientific impacts, anything you would think of, try uh, that is really bright, make sure that you use it and make sure that it is evidence-based, is not, uh, not exaggeration. Um, so, what do we know about the problem? And what do we need to know to solve it? This is a very good opportunity to introduce your objectives. Um, identify the knowledge gaps and introduce some options to, to address it. And these options uh, will be translated later on into your objectives which means that this will be a very good introduction to, uh, to, um, to your objectives. Uh, why this research team in particular? While writing uh, this state-of-the-art review, make sure you cover any previous work uh, uh, produced by the research team. Uh, any studies, any achievements, uh, recognitions, even pilot studies, uh, make sure that you place the research uh, team as experts and, and you showcase how, uh, how expert uh, they are. Why this proposal in particular? What is the specific uh, you know, uh, importance nationally and internationally? What is the novelty uh, you know, uh, side? Uh, why? What is the added value of this particular proposal? Um, that will uh, that will add. Uh, with this, not only you have identified the research uh, the research problem, uh, you showed its importance. You showed uh, the knowledge gaps. Uh, you show you you proposed some some approaches, and then you are ready to uh, present your uh, research uh, research objectives. Uh, make sure that you use some positive language and when people read your objectives, they feel like they are captivating. 
they are not neutral you know they are captivating um, and and make sure they are logically ordered uh, and this is a key uh, advice because when you organize your knowledge gaps logically uh, and then you translate each of those knowledge gaps into uh, a main objective by default your objectives will be uh, uh, ordered uh, logically so uh, each knowledge gap should be addressed with a main objective uh, that will create some redundance uh, which makes reading your proposal is much much easier uh, the next step is to provide some detailed objectives which adding some sub objectives to the main uh, objectives uh, and then your your objectives are ready you you now can move to the research approach in details and guess what you should use <laughs> to develop your research approach yes it's your objectives <laughs> uh, so you your research approach people should feel that this is a very interesting research approach you should convince them that this is not this is not a typical research approach. You need to throw in something new, something interesting, something that would motivate the, the uh, reviewers to uh, to select your uh, your proposal. Uh, uh, all you need to do is to translate your main objectives to tasks and sub objectives to activities, and then provide the details under each of those uh, each of those activities. So, what are the components that we need to, to include? Well. For each task, you should uh, provide some in information about how the task will be carried out. Um, what is the method? And use up-to-date methods uh, and provide some, some appropriate references for that. Uh, use clear visuals uh, to assure clarity. And then uh, you need to try to answer the question of what input do we need to carry out this task? And what are the available inputs? which show that yes, the research team is almost ready. We need just this grant proposal to, to make it to there. Uh, uh, and also what are the input that should be, uh, uh, that should be purchased using the proposal uh, or uh, the, the fund from, uh, from this grant? Uh, that's a very good introduction to your budget because that's, this is your justification. Uh, this is your justification. Now we know that you need this equipment for this particular task. That's, that's your justification. Uh, also, you need to, sh to share information about who will uh, carry out the task. Who's the team member? And make sure you uh, provide some uh, team, uh, you know, uh, teamwork style there. Uh, Non-experienced must be coupled with uh, uh, you know, uh, either training or supervision uh, from, uh, from, senior, uh, from senior scientists. Uh, that's the career development opportunity here. Um, and also it's, it's the knowledge transfer and also it's the plan B. If you have two people who are on the same uh, equipment, that means if one of them is sick or absent, you have, uh, you have a, plan, uh, a plan B. Uh, and for each task, you should cover the expected you know, results and, and how these results will help you achieve the objectives uh, uh, and, and, and uh, eventually uh, you know, address the knowledge, uh, the knowledge gap. As you see, there is a, a complete story here, starting from the knowledge gap, ending with, uh, with, the, knowledge, uh, with the knowledge gap. Uh, if, if you do so, you will have a very good research approach uh, section uh, of, your, uh, of your proposal. Uh, our next part is the budget. And the budget has to be well calculated, not just calculated budget. It's, it has to be well calculated budget. Uh, you need to use the template provided by the funding agency. Um, and if, if they don't provide one, ask for it uh, or ask a colleague who have who has submitted uh, and went, won this grant before uh, to provide it to you because they break it down into different, uh, you know, different sections and each section has its own uh, components and you have to, uh, to respect those categories and make sure that you appropriately and correctly 
and properly uh, categorize your uh, your items that you are seeking funds uh, for. Salaries goes uh, salaries go here. Um, uh, equipment they need a separate breakdown. Uh, uh, you know, expendable supplies they go here. You know, uh, travel costs they go here and. And we need we need to respect uh, we need to respect that uh, everything has to go in the appropriate and and the proper uh, the proper place. Uh, provide enough information to prove confidence, but don't put too much information to restrict your options when you buy in instruments and when you buy equipment and when you buy uh, things. So try to strike that balance between enough information to uh, to prove competence but not too much information to restrict your uh, to restrict your uh, your options uh, there um, do not exceed the maximum and do not go for it if you can uh, leave yourself some room for maneuver because they might ask you to change some items to add some items so leave yourself some room for maneuver uh, use some real numbers. Do not guess it. Just look it up. S Google it. Find it. And know the price and list the price uh, as it is. Uh, in most cases, there are some factor that has to be added uh, to, uh, to the price, which is the delivery cost. Um, if you have an intermediary uh, uh, supplier, they, they will need to make some profit. And so usually, usually, um, the price is uh, ha the price is uh, uh, or contains um, a factor of let's say ten percent or fifteen percent um, multiplied by the original price. So the uh, what you report might be a little uh, a little above, and that should be uh, justified in your uh, in your budget. Uh, at least this is the case here. Um, um, and and make sure you don't you don't round number. You don't round numbers, put them as they are. 1800, it's not 2000, it's 1800s. Uh, it's 20,480, uh, don't round it, just put it as, uh, put it, as it is. Uh, make sure someone will check, will, will look at the, uh, uh, the final math calculation and will check it because if you guys don't do, Make definitely the funding agency will do, uh, and if there is any you know miscalculations, it is better for you to discover that and instead of receiving a comment uh, a comment about it. Um, let's take a look at the Gantt uh, the Gantt chart. Uh, the Gantt chart is basically uh, an, an a bird's eye view of how uh, the project will be carried out. Uh, what are the various activities when each of them will begin? Uh, are they overlapping or overlapping or not? And for the entire project, when uh, will it start and when uh, will it end? Um, so therefore, you know, you list all your um, tasks and then you highlight uh, when exactly they will start and will when they will end, uh, uh, and also um, the uh, the expected measurable outcomes and how you will qu quantify. Uh, you know, progress uh, there. Um, if you don't have a template, use the template provided. If you don't have one, ask, uh, ask for one. Uh, be consistent. So use the same numbering system and the same order for the tasks uh, you have used in the uh, research approach before because consistency uh, makes things, you know, much, uh, much, much, uh, much, much easier. Uh, Again, you know, uh, when you select the starting dates, be careful. Uh, you don't start a process before uh, the, um, the prerequisite processes ends. Uh, when you distribute your, uh, the duties on the research team, make sure uh, you, you don't overload them in one particular time and uh, they don't have anything to do uh, for the rest of, <laughs> of the project. Uh, if you have graduate students, make sure you don't overload them uh, during the exams period. Uh, and, and things of these nature that show that you actually gave your proposal, uh, you know, enough thinking and enough uh, consideration. Uh, so be strategic uh, when you do uh, these, uh, these things. Uh, your next piece is the project management plan. And this is the game, um, the game plan. How will you use uh, your uh, 
personnel, instruments and facilities, and time to, uh, to carry out each task. Who will use what, when to do what? So this is the recipe. This is what actually shows how competent the research team is and how familiar they are with the, uh, with the research topic they are proposing to, uh, to, uh, to deliver. Uh, again, you know, uh, uh, be consistent. Be consistent because consistency makes things uh, much, much easier. Uh, for uh, for the, the project management plan, usually we go chron chronologically. We start with what, what will happen first then what happened next and so on uh, with some clear timeline for each uh, and uh, for every and each activity and we we need also uh, to have some uh, uh, clear statement about what uh, each you know uh, team member will uh, will do um, the progress measurement method and also uh, the learning uh, development opportunities uh, there um, we, we also need data management plan. How um, we need a clear data management plan. How will the data uh, collected uh, and how will the original raw data files uh, be generated? How the data entry will take place and how we will verify it? How we will store the data? Uh, who will have access? Um, and will the data be shared or not? Uh, because you know some funding agency agencies might require uh, might have some requirements in terms of how to deal with the data uh, have a clear and a specific plan and you know uh, be specific as much as uh, as you can uh, finally the research outcomes and impacts um, we need to have as, to show some inspiring outputs uh, they will they need uh, to, to know what are the expected uh, projects outputs, uh, the tangible uh, products, something like the patents, uh, actual products, prototypes, uh, state-of-the-art facilities, uh, new instruments, new establishing a uh, new infrastructure. All these are tangible products uh, or tangible uh, uh, outputs from, uh, from uh, your, uh, your uh, project. Uh, but there is also the publication. Uh, international uh, publication, uh, abstracts at conferences, masters and PhD uh, thesis and dissertations, uh, graduation projects for undergraduate students, uh, extension documents, um, stakeholder summaries, uh, public summaries uh, intended for the public to inform the public. All these are, are very, very useful uh, outputs to, uh, to include. Uh, but also don't forget that you are building uh, teams and you are helping, um, you know, uh, team members to uh, to have some career development, uh, team building, training, learning new techniques, establishing international connections. Anything uh, of these is of value, and you should uh, you should list it, but be uh, be specific. Uh, any general benefit uh, and and that is focused and. Uh, specific and measurable. Make sure you uh, you highlight it. Um, this. Uh, Sa Sorry, Saeed. Uh, can you kind of finish in about ten minutes? Uh, less than that. That's a great. Yeah, because we're a little uh, bit over. It's okay. Th Thank you. Four minutes. Let's say three four minutes will be will be over. Um, so uh, the the uh, the the feasibility, financial feasibility, socioeconomic impacts, because we. Uh, we do research for for society. We don't just do research for 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 you know uh, getting promoted. Um, uh, when you show that there are potential investment opportunity for the project output, uh, or there is some potential interest in uh, 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 the, the product uh, that will come out of uh, of. So let's say you have uh, another source of funding or you have someone who is interested in buying the output that will come out of the uh, of um, uh, uh, of your pro of your uh, uh, project that means there will be some market or society benefit uh, 
uh, that will come out of uh, of your uh, of your proposal. Um, we also need to look at the return on investment of raising the awareness of the public. You will generate summaries for them. You will generate some stakeholders, you know, uh, summaries that help them to take some well-informed uh, informed decisions. Uh, you will need to have a paragraph that starts with this. By funding this project, this uh, this project, the X funding agency will achieve, and then you list those clearly and precisely, uh, so they don't miss it. They don't miss it in. Uh, the middle of uh, of the lines. Um, in in couple of minutes, let's take a look what happens after we finish. You know, uh, writing our proposal. We need to carefully review our proposal before we uh, before we submit it. Uh, this should be a team effort. Uh, all team members should contribute to it. Uh, and we sometimes also need to get an outsider's view, uh, a colleague of ours who is not included in the team. Uh, or in the proposal to give us, you know, the the, the outsiders uh, review before someone else, uh, you know, uh, reviewers, you know, <laughs> give us this uh, this perspective. Uh, the project submission we need to uh, to start as early as we can. So timing is the key. Uh, at least plan to submit at least one day before the deadline because you know uh, technical issues happens. The technical issues happen always uh, at the deadline. Um, make sure you use the template. This is your last chance to double check the template and uh, your proposal and to make sure it's, it's actually, actually matching uh, all templates. Review the guidelines. Make sure you have your own checklist for everything requested. Uh, we had a grant proposal that has been rejected for missing to stamp one page. It was like four million uh, project, and 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 we didn't learn about that uh, until we waited nine months just for one little stamp. So make sure you have your own checklist for everything that you uh, come across uh, during you know uh, the writing uh, process. Uh, if you receive the uh, conditional acceptance. Uh, uh, Try to navigate it wisely. Uh, appreciate the reviewer's comments. Uh, be objective. Think win-win. Try to help them achieve what they propose in terms of changes. And at the same time, make sure that these changes will not offset your objectives and what you are trying uh, to do. Try to reach a middle ground and be appreciative. Uh, make the changes within the approved budget because they will not, usually when they accept it uh, conditionally, they assign and they, they determine the approved budget. If, they, if you don't know the figure, ask, ask about it. Uh, it's better than you know, exceeding that, uh, that figure and then um, going through another uh, round of, uh, of uh, revision. Uh, the project contracting phase is a very simple one. You know, uh, there is, for, for each call, there are uh, expected, uh, um, you know, uh, sides to sign it. Uh, the university chancellor, uh, the uh, the faculty dean, the department's head, the PI, uh, th they have their own requirements. And if you looked up uh, or you, um, you know, uh, if you examined the, uh, the the contract before you write, you will know way, way, way early on what you need to do at, uh, at this stage. Make sure you read the contract very well. Uh, if, if there is something that you cannot comply with, do not scrub it, scrub it under the rug. Bring it up, discuss it. If there is a conflict of interest between the funding agency and your institution, bring them to the discussion. Make sure they discuss it. Uh, the, the funding agency wants 50% of the patents. And the funding agent, the, the, your institution wants 70% of the patent, uh, you know, uh, revenue. Then there is a conflict of, conflict of interest. Make sure you bring them together and let them discuss it and, and um, settle on what they both will agree, uh, they both will agree on. Don't sign a contract that you know you will not be able to comply with. If there is something you know you, you cannot comply with, do not reject the contract. 
discuss it first. Maybe they will offer you uh, some, uh, some uh, solution. Uh, receiving funds will depend on the funding agency. Uh, some funding agencies will uh, ask you to open a specific bank account. Uh, some funding agency will, uh, some institutions will say, no, we have a specific account for grants. This is how our financial team work. So just ask for the rules and follow them. And um, with this, I hope we made it all through this lengthy and detailed overview of how to write a grant, uh, a grant proposal. And um, uh, thank you all so much for your attention. And thank you, Kathy, for the six minutes extra that I took from the Q&A time. Oh, no, no. Thank you so very much. It has been very informative. And we have a bunch of questions. So uh, you can see them in Q&A box, but we also try to categorize it for you. Okay. And uh, I, first, um, I think some people want, to, want you to repeat uh, some of say like for the objectives, what they have to, uh, some question, uh question is all over the place actually okay so um mm -hmm. okay so um carol do you want to uh kind of start or you want sure. to go ahead um i i'll say that um there were uh quite a few questions that are about specific topic areas like theoretical um physics or um, libraries and so forth with people wondering how they can find grants uh, to fund the things that they're hoping to fund the project. So do you have advice about that? And um, just like, is there a website or search engines or things like that? How do you, how do you go about finding your grants? Uh, uh, well, that's a very good question. And I think this is one of the main, uh, the main questions that there, uh, there is no one unique answer for. Uh, unfortunately, um, we have to work in our, uh, you know, uh, research zone, uh, and and we need to identify those ourselves because you, uh, we are from all over the, the world, as you as you see, we have we come from different disciplines, we have we are at different career stages, uh, we have different qualifications, um, and we, we need to familiarize ourselves, and we need to know of as many uh, funding uh, sources as we can. Uh, we, we categorized them into three different categories. You know, institutional funds, uh, you can get all the answers about any institutional funds from, the, uh, from your colleagues, uh, definitely uh, at your own institution, and also uh, from the uh, project management unit at your, uh, at your institution. They will give you this part. Uh, for, for national uh, for national funding sources, uh, being a member of uh, a scientific society like, uh, um, let's say, the uh, American Phytopathological Society, uh, the European uh, 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 European uh, uh, Society of Agronomy, uh, and so on. Uh, your societies might help you more with the uh, your national society will help you more with the local funding, uh, the national funding, and also your international societies will help you uh, with the uh, international funding sources. Uh, I, I am aware of a platform that uh, has been under development by Elsevier uh, to, uh, to, list, uh, um, to list funding sources. Uh, however, uh, the last time I, I checked it, it was uh, at the, at a very early phase of development. So I'm not sure if if it is uh, if it is currently in, in in a ready state or not. Uh, but definitely, this is something that is worthy of um, uh, of checking it, of checking it out. It might it might be a good place also to start from. I actually uh, when I browse around internet and I found one. One area is called uh, the is the Exlibris Pivot P I V O T, and seem to be is a pro is a product that you can search with search funding, um, everywhere. And also, do you mind, do you mind sharing that in the chat, Kathy? Huh? 
you mind sharing sharing the the link to sure, that? Sure, 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 sure. I, I actually the other thing I want to tell people mm -hmm. is don't forget about your the library guy. Actually, uh, I found out that say for example, the library guy of uh, University of California Berkeley is also mm -hmm. very good, even though they may be U.S. and Europe centric but mm -hmm. they actually also uh, consist of, you know, something for international, uh, let me try to get to international uh, grant funding as well too. So uh, I'm just sharing in the chat. So people who are interested and go there. Uh, with, without further to do, we can move on to other type of question, which is more specific, I think. I think kind of following up on that, somebody has asked if it's um, if it's a crime to present one grant proposal to multiple potential funders, or should it be done sequentially? Uh, I think it's it's one of the terms that uh, um, all the funding agency uh, uh, asks specifically about is okay. uh, <laughs> consent that we have not submitted. This uh, this pro this proposal to uh, to any uh, other funding agency, and here here in Egypt we uh, th there is a, an official letter signed by the dean or the chancellor uh, confirming <laughs> confirming that because you know it, it would be it will not be fair you know if if, if someone takes two uh, two chances and takes two sets of resources at two different funding agencies for the same exact. Uh, for the same exact topic. So that leads into our next uh, webinar about ethics. Uh, yes. So uh, that's, a, that's a good, very firm answer. Um, so some more specific uh, questions are, um, somebody asked uh, if it's okay to have a long title or if it should be concise. Uh, well, that's a, that's a very good question. Um, we we need we need an efficient title an efficient title means it's not longer than needed but also it's not short and shorter than needed uh, as long as you you can use use the most precise version of titles you have uh, but but don't don't miss the key selling points when you write uh, when you write your title um, you know, I, I wish I wish I have a, a certain number of words to give you. Uh, I, I, I don't, uh, but make sure you don't go beyond the second line. You know, um, as long as you within these 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 uh, two lines, that would be that would be good. The shorter, the better, definitely. But it has to be, it has to include all your selling your selling points. I also want to uh, interject is that the requirement, the call of the grant, sometimes I know NIH, US NIH, they actually lay out, lay those things out. So just like support, uh, sub submitting a paper to publisher, okay. all yeah. those are laid out, do read all those instructions carefully. Exactly, and if there is a limit, we should, we should not exceed it. If they have uh, a word count or a character count, we, we should not go beyond. Uh, we should not go beyond that. Um, somebody asked if you could share some sample objectives. Uh, some sample objectives. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, let's, let me go back to my okay. uh, to, to the proposal that we uh, that we were uh, that we were discussing. Um, just go to. Back to my slides, uh, writing phase. Let's go to the proposal. I don't, I don't have an example here, but I, I'll extract them from uh, from the abstract that we uh, that we took uh, that we took a look at. So uh, this uh, this grant uh, we we were proposing to develop ozone tolerant wheat varieties. Uh, to do so, we need to identify. Uh, uh, source of tolerance, uh, which has been done um, in, in my PhD. And the next step was to cross it with local varieties. So that's one objective. 
uh, the following uh, objective is to screen uh, the, the 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 following objective is to uh, to develop recombinant uh, emerald lines to take it all the way to homozygosity uh, where we have stable variety stable lines that from which we could select that's that's a second logical objective uh, not all of them are good definitely that means we need to screen them um, uh, for ozone for for ozone tolerance and disease resistance so the following objective would be uh, screening and and at two phases screening for disease resistance then ozone tolerance um, and not all of them will show yield superiority or uh, will uh, give us high yield that means we need to evaluate them uh, for uh, superior yield under uh, you know natural uh, natural condition so these are the the objectives of uh, of of this uh, of this grant and as you see each of those could be uh, we, we could break it down in uh, furthermore into sub sub objectives uh, like you know uh, crosses how 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 are we going to grow them to flowering what varieties are we going to cross? Um, how are we going to take, uh, how are we going to advance them? Are we going to use one seed per plant, uh, uh, which we call single seed descent, or we, uh, we will select at each, uh, at each generation? So you, we could inject or we could split, uh, we could break down the, the main objectives into all the steps needed for each for each one of those. Uh, the, the, the key advice here is, is logic, is logic. We need, we need to have uh, a logical order for our steps and also uh, for, for our main objectives and also for our sub, uh, sub objectives because that's, that's what makes a proposal easily understood and uh, you know, uh, reviewers can, can have a, 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 a lot of, uh, you know, confidence in their understanding of the proposal and uh, vice versa. Because if, if the reviewers don't understand your proposal well, they will not stand up for it. They will not support it. Uh, but if they understand it well, they will. They will and they will push you uh, across that finish line and they will make sure that you are handed, you know, uh, you, will, you, will, you are handed the fund. Uh, Sue, so you want to go ahead? No, you go ahead. Okay. Uh, some more practical questions. Um, one of them is, are there instances that we could include fixed access uh, into the budget, I think, like cost of the constructing buildings and that kind of stuff? Yeah, that takes us back, uh, Katie, to your point. Uh, there is the guidelines uh, from the funding agency. That tells you what they are supposed to fund and what they are not supposed to fund. Uh, in, in some calls, they say, well, we don't have any fund at all for construction. Uh, in, some, in some grants, they probably will uh, pay for up to 10% for, for uh, you know, uh, those uh, construction and, and, and infrastructure. Uh, so it, de it depends on the funding. Uh, there are some calls that are directly comp directed completely towards you know um, construction, <laughs> uh, like the capacity building uh, capacity building uh, calls. So th that's why we need to select a call that is actually matching uh, our objectives, and we need to make sure that each item we need to uh, to get done uh, using using the grant is actually allowed. Uh, before we put it in uh, in the budget page, the guidelines. The guidelines is the key. Yeah. Okay. And then the other one is also kind of along that line is the pro. They uh, um, they're concerning about some project have no uh, economic impact or at least superficially, it's only have philosophical outcomes. Uh, is the theoretical theoretical research. Uh, some only have social outcomes. So how can those projects be funded or assured that they can attain grants? So it depends on, I think, 
who do you apply to? I'm sure there are grant funding, theoretical research, and social in, uh, research with social impact. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. And that takes us back to uh, the technology readiness level of the call. Because you know, if, if you are at the basic uh, uh, research and and, um, and and science, then target target calls that are uh, you know interested in funding this phase. Um, don't don't go for something that is geared more towards uh, taking prototypes and and moving them into the production or uh, uh, validated ideas and uh, you know. Uh, developing prototypes out of those ideas. So we need we need to respect the research, um, the, the technology readiness level of our idea, and the ready, the technology readiness level of uh, of the call, and make sure that they match. If we do so, we will be in in the safe zone. Uh, uh, the other thing too is um, we the, the, or or scientists in general. Um, tend to avoid talking uh, about the social impacts of their research, uh, which is a key selling point. So, for example, the, the uh, developing new varieties uh, with high yield with, that are less sensitive to air pollution, this will uh, uh, generate more profits for, for farmers. Uh, that this will help them, uh, you know, uh, improve their their uh, the, the life quality. The, they will be able to support their, their children's education. Uh, this will help the country. This will reduce the imports. Uh, it will help the currency. So there is a lot of things that we can briefly mention just to to let the reviewers know that you know what by supporting this project, you're not just supporting me. You're not just supporting my team. You're not just supporting my department or uh, you know uh, college or university. You're supporting the whole society. So it's 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 good not to shy from those, uh, and also it's good to put yourself in 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 the winning spot. Don't 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 go away from the technology readiness level of your idea, and don't um, neglect the technology readiness level of, uh, of the call. Uh, the other question is about uh, quite so specific. Can you uh, submit a, a doctoral thesis for grant funding? I can think of, uh, if, if it is a complete thesis, you know, it's, it's not. Uh, if, if they mean they can submit their thesis proposal to get fund for it, the answer is definitely, definitely, definitely yes. That's what they should do. That's why we encourage PhD students and master's students to apply for grants, to, to take their proposal, their dissertation or thesis proposal, and get, get it funded. If they can do, their advisors will love them will love them, their institution will celebrate them. Uh, that, that's, that's what we are here today for, to, to help them to, to, to write grants about their, uh, their you know, uh, graduate studies uh, research. And also the other one is, the other question is, if you're writing a grant proposal, do you have to present preliminary data? If so, how about if you do not have one? So I, that means that the research may be started already. Does it have to be have some preliminary data? That's a very good question. I, I really appreciate the, uh, the, this question. Um, uh, well, if, if you recall, let me let me get back to this slide because it's going to help us a lot in this uh, in this uh, in this one. Uh, it's in the writing phase. Uh, it's uh, when we write the state of the art. Um, uh, review about uh, about the uh, uh, yes uh, we should uh, we should be here um, okay um, okay uh, we we need we need to have some reason for applying for the grant we need to be qualified to apply we need to show our experience 
uh, if, if we don't have data, well, that, this is a very good place to start. Uh, pilot experiments, quick experiments that show that your ideas might work. These are a very good activities in terms of return on investment. Um, yes, we need to. Uh, in some cases, previous publication will be much enough. Uh, if, if we don't, that's fine, as long as we can show that we are experts using, using different tools. Uh, I am aware of some uh, calls that were conditionally accepted uh, only uh, if the researcher submit preliminary data. Okay. Uh, and, and in this case, they did. They submitted unpublished data uh, and, 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 and they, received, they received the fund. Uh, so they, if, if it is a new idea, if this is something new, no one can, you know, uh, if, if we can't find information somewhere else, well, that's an opportunity to, uh, to use pilot experiments. Uh, Carol, do you have any last minute, last, do you spot another like, last question because I see a lot of question is on how to find a funding source and such and those are all depend on um, each situation I think so we kind of answer it category so and we are into three minutes <laughs> uh, uh, it's difficult because there are some some outstand some some questions that we haven't quite had time to get to Mm -hmm. um, but we're also out of time. But I might right. throw just one last one at you, um, which is uh, how many pages does the proposal need to be? Um, does it does it vary on that the information? Be or is according there... to the requirement and yeah. stuff. So those are all Again. just like your instruction for yeah. applications. A lot of your question can be answered by reading the instruction very carefully and about funding sources. The grant sources is a lot of search material. Google is so you amazingly can be your help. Go to your library, go to some database. And I saw one participant actually gave us some uh, tips on the uh, grant sources. So, you know, do, do search though. So um, I think we're two minutes in, we yeah. have to switch. Sai, could you uh, release uh, your screen? And then so that Carol can take over. Thank you, Zai. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, okay, so I just want to quickly go um, through a little bit of wrap up um, information for you. So, uh, first of all, I'd like to, to highlight to everybody that we do on our research for life web pages have a lot more information um, to support you through the whole research cycle so we have um, you can see that there's the free resources from our partners um, that is under the training tab on the web on the web page so we'd encourage you to go there um, because it will enhance everything that you've been learning in our webinars um, and then also I want to let you know that as we send out an email with the recording, um, there's also a post webinar survey and we would really appreciate if everybody could fill that in because this is a pilot um, webinar series that we're running and so we want as much feedback as possible about um, what what you think that we've done well and what you think we could adjust to make it even better in the future. So, and you can see that the recordings and presentations of all six of the webinars will be available at that um, web address that you see on the slide. And so the first two are already there and this one will be um, up in not too long as well, so that you can rewatch and um, see the slides there. And so finally, I just want to tell you about the next webinar in our series, which is going to happen on Wednesday, the 29th of June um, at uh, 8 a.m. Eastern um, e EDT. But of course, we're all in different time zones around the world. So, so when you register, it will give you the right time zone. Uh, this one is about understanding publishing ethics. 
And so we have two speakers who are, who are going to present at this one. One is from um, the publishing world and one is a researcher. And so they're going to be covering um, an introductory, um, give an introduction to publishing ethics, which will include an overview of the common types of issues which can arise. Um, and so they also want to grapple with some of the most common issues that they, from both perspectives, see cropping up so that uh, people, researchers can avoid these. And you'll come away from it, it um, having the opportunity to learn about authorship issues, duplicate submissions and publication problems, originality issues, um, data manipulation, and consent. So there's so much that could go under uh, research ethics, but that's what this webinar will focus on. So we hope that you'll be able to join us there. Or if you can't actually join us in person, you can certainly watch the webinar recording afterwards. So that's it. Thank you. The, I just put the uh, URL for register. Uh, oh, thank you. The information and then you click the registration link on, in the, on that page and you can register. And one reminder uh, for the webinar on the 29th, it will be one hour earlier than uh, previous three webinars. So just uh, for the webinar four, five and six, it will be starting at, um, for me, I, I'm in the US, it will be 8 a.m. for me. And then for, uh, I think Africa mostly is like 2 p.m. And then, uh, so it's just fine. Just make sure you look at your, your clock, which is. So um, thank you very much. And then we'll save the question and answer the question and question and answer box. And then we will take a quick look at them afterwards. And then if there is anything that uh, we need to uh, address, then we will send email to you directly. So do look out for uh, the recording in about a week, uh, which should be less than a week, and also the slides as well. Then you have all the links that you need. All right, thank you very much. Uh, sorry for a little bit overrun, and I'm so glad uh, we still have 295 now uh, attendee. So uh, yeah, see you next time. Bye. Thank you so much, Saeed.